Let's do an introduction to the Doppler effect. Like this, a weird way to do subtitles for the Formula One race. <laughs> Zoom. So let's talk about the Doppler effect itself. So uh, first of all, what is it? It is a change in frequency of a received signal, and that depends on the movement. So what do I mean by that is, is some object is going to be moving, and this could be something that's emitting sound, it could be something that's emitting light. And by the way, um, it could be the source that's moving, or and the observer is still, or it could be um, a source is still, and the observer is the one moving. Okay, now let's remind ourselves again, what is the wave equation? It goes V equals F lambda. And the reason I put this here is I just want you to, to focus on this piece then, that uh, if we look at F, for example, and lambda, we know that they are inversely proportional to each other. In other words, if one gets bigger, the other one gets smaller. Okay, this is going to be the key thing right here to understand what's going to be happening if we're talking about frequency or the wavelength. Okay, so if I say, oh, the wavelength increases, then you know the frequency decreases. They are opposites. So let's consider a situation where the source is moving. So let's just say uh, this is something that's emitting sound. Let's say this is a source here. This could be like a car that's driving to the right. And let's say you're an observer just standing there listening. Well, what happens is because this source is moving, you know, you can imagine that the, the source is sort of emitting these, you know, concentric rings that go out. And so if the source was being still, it would, you know, emit one, you know, pulse of sound and then another one and then another one. So if you looked at it, you know, over time, you'd see like a bunch of concentric rings all centered at the same place going out. But the problem is, or not the problem, but the interesting part is your source is actually now moving. So as it does one, you know, goes out, it's moved a little bit before it sends out the next one. It's moved a little bit before it sends out the next one. So that means that although the source was, let's say, uh, well, the center of this circle, for example, is probably here. That's where the source was when it emitted that first one. And then the source was probably over here when it emitted the middle one. And now it's here when it emits this other one. Yes, you have to kind of imagine this. So what's interesting about this is that now you can measure the wavelength then. This right here, this you know distance, that's lambda. And so what does that mean then? Well, that means then the observer who is there is going to receive what? You're going to receive that the wavelength is smaller. And if the wavelength is smaller, what does that mean? That means the frequency will be higher. So the way I think of this is um, as something comes close to you, as it's approaching you, the, you have a higher pitch, or you could say you have a lower wavelength. Now, um, what happens, of course, is on this other side right here, you know, this wavelength right here is, you know, bigger, for example. And okay, well, that means, and you know, if you took this whole thing here, then and you had it, you know, pass by the observer and keeps moving to the right, that's what's going on here now. Look, now the observer is standing over here, and the source is moving to the right. In other words, the observer is going to be hearing these, you know, these pulses of sound that are larger wavelengths. Well, that means the wavelength is larger, and remember what that means, then the frequency is lower. So these are the two different situations right here where if the observer is moving, you know, uh, towards you, or if the observer, uh, sorry, if the source is moving towards the observer, or if the source is moving away from the observer. Okay, so that's what's really important here. Now this can work for sound, but it also works for light. Okay, so this is this is the same regardless. All right, well, let's consider the moving observer. <laughs> like if you saw a light wave, would you wave back? If the observer is the one moving, it's the same kind of idea. Okay, so if the observer moves away from the source, what happens? Well, then the wavelength will get bigger, which means the frequency will get smaller. And of course, it's the opposite. If the observer moves towards the source, well, then those waves will be squished. So that means wavelength goes smaller. That means the frequency gets larger. So those are your two different cases here for you know, how you're moving here. So this one or this one. Okay, well, let's consider then what happens for sound. I really like this one here for sound because uh, I think this this is actually how I remember um, Doppler effect. Honestly, it, it sounds really stupid, but I just imagine a car going by. Like, I like to watch Formula One, for example. When a car goes by, it goes... Neow. That tells me everything I need to know about Doppler effect. Because as it's moving towards you, remember, you have the higher frequency, uh, in other words, higher pitch. Why is that? Well, if we go back to our image uh, right here, if the, uh, the source is coming towards you, then you've got the wavelength is smaller, right? And if the wavelength is smaller, the frequency is higher. 
So that's why. So if you look at this, it's the same diagram, basically. So if it's higher frequency, then it's a higher pitch. And it moves away from you, then it's a lower frequency, so it's a lower pitch. And the same kind of thing happens then for light. If a star is moving towards you, what happens? Well, then the wavelength is going to be lower. And what does that mean then? Uh, if you remember your different uh, colors, uh, blue, for example, is around uh, 400 nanometers. Red, for example, um, is around six or 700 nanometers. Let's just say something like that, uh, between six and 700. So what happens is this, if a star is moving towards you, if the wavelength goes down, it goes to lower values. It doesn't necessarily become blue, it's just that the wavelengths are lower. So we can say it's a lower wavelength. And sometimes we call this blue shifted. Now, it's not necessarily that it becomes blue, okay? It's not that it changes. It's just that a more accurate word is to say lower wavelength. But people like to use the word blue shift instead. So, all right, fine. So if a star or a galaxy or something is coming towards you, the wavelengths will be lower. Yes, it'll be a lower wavelength. And of course, then the opposite happens. If a star is moving away from you, then the wavelength will be increased. And that means we can say it has a higher wavelength, so we say it's red shifted. Now I personally love this stuff right here because this uh, is all about astrophysics, right? It, it turns out when we look at different galaxies out in the universe, pretty much all of them are red shifted. So in other words, we see all these things right here, all these wavelengths that we recognize uh, from different you know, transitions that we can see in stars, for example, or in gases. We recognize these things, but they're all shifted to larger wavelengths. So they're red shifted. And that tells us then that pretty much every galaxy then is going away from us. That's actually really interesting. Now there's a few of them, of course, that are coming towards us, but those are all the closest ones. So like the uh, Mil um, Milky Way galaxy is ours, our galaxy, uh, but we're actually coming towards uh, another galaxy called the Andromeda galaxy, for example. So th those ones are blue shifted, and that's because we're coming towards each other. But pretty much everything else is going away from us. And that's how we have an idea that, hey, the universe is probably expanding. Because if everything seems to be going away from us, with a few exceptions, like I said, like the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, but otherwise, if everything's going away from us, then it makes sense that, you know, maybe everything was together at once. And that's what we call the Big Bang Theory. So this Doppler effect for light tells us a lot about the universe. Well, let's look at an example. Um, so we're going to be driving our car at a constant speed, and then you start honking your horn. So maybe I'll just draw my car here. So there we go. You can see I'm an awesome artist, uh, and it emits its sound. And of course, then you're driving by your friend who is just standing there stationary. And of course, you're not going to run them over. You're going to run, you know, drive beside them. And so this car horn is, uh, the sound is coming out at F0. In other words, here over time, this is going to be the frequency here, just going to be F0. So in other words, if you're sitting in the car, that's the sound you're going to hear the whole time. It's going to be a constant sound for you in the car, just going like, eh. Now at time t equals 1.0 seconds, you pass your friend standing outside. And you're supposed to draw a graph of F versus t. Uh, so what's going to happen then? Well, if you remember about Doppler effect, as you're coming towards, remember the wavelengths are going to be squished, which means the uh, wavelength goes down, that means the frequency goes up. So that means the observer, your friend, is going to hear a sound that's higher until, of course, what happens, um, well, as you pass by them, it's going to go you know, down, and then it's going to go flat again. Now. I'm just trying to draw straight lines here, something like this. And of course, then this line right here, right in the center right here, this is going to be, that will be 1.0 seconds. So in other words, that's right when you pass your friend. So in other words, this is where it goes like this. And notice it's flat. So that's the key thing is that if you're moving at a constant speed at least, uh, then this graph will be flat. What if you're not driving at a constant speed? Well, then this graph won't be flat. Maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down. It depends how you're accelerating. But this is the key thing for a Doppler effect, and I, I really like this example because it really does show what you could be asked on exams, but it also requires sort of a, a fundamental sort of like a qualitative feel for what's going on.